Let's chug this. <coughs> Watch my vlog channel. I'm sick. Good morning and welcome back to another episode of Mornings with McKay K. I'm McKay K. And if you haven't seen one of these episodes before, it's basically a time when I join you from my bed every other Monday, which sometimes only occurs every other month. No makeup on and whatever I wore to bed last night. And I just chat. It's just a casual conversation. If you haven't seen any of these episodes before, I'm actually just going to link the playlist to all of them so that you can catch up and get the vibe. The most recent one before this is an important one to watch. It's only a few, like five minutes of your time. Check it out. Come back to this video. Usually my mugs are a little more festive than just a plain color, but I figured I was going for a theme because I got these new jogger sweatpants from Aerie. Aren't they cute? They have stars and snowflakes on them and they're like tight at the- oh I just love them and this is like my first time wearing them. They were originally like 30 something and I got them for $12. Good deal. Anyway, yeah, I usually have a more festive mug but I figured I was going with the red today. So yay. Okay. Okay, and if you haven't noticed, the reason that my bed is kind of in the most weirdest place ever and I have all this furniture here is because I actually painted my bedroom. I just finished. So we had to move all the furniture away from the walls, but that did not let me stop. Well, but that did not stop me from uploading this episode. I know what I want to talk about because I've wanted to talk about it for a very, very long time. In fact, I wanted to bring up the subject since October when I uploaded the other Mornings with McKay episode. However, at the time I had these kind of like these two subjects. One was what I'm going to talk about today and the other was change and I chose that one to talk about but this has been festering inside of my mind for a few months. Part of me thinks maybe I shouldn't make this video because it's irrelevant to my life now or I don't want people to get the wrong idea. But at the same time, the thoughts are still there, and at one point I did really want to make this video, so I'm just, I'm gonna go for it and see if I can still make sense out of everything. Today I really want to talk about when people leave you. And I don't mean uh, passing uh, from this life to another, uh, death and all that <laughs> depressing stuff on a Monday. I just mean when someone that you were close to is no longer in your life whether it was your choice or theirs. Let me just start by saying something very, very simple. And it's gonna sound harsh if you haven't heard this before, but someone has every right to walk out of your life when they feel that they don't belong in it anymore. That being said, <coughs> oh my God, I'm so sick. I have strap, by the way, surprise. That being said, you have every right to do the same and walk out of somebody else's life when you no longer fit in it. Um, what I mean by this is that I really believe that in order to succeed and just be the best person you can be, you need to surround yourself with good people. People that, you know, will help you thrive and be a better person. A person could be a great person, but they could be toxic to you and they could hold you back in ways and you don't want that. So to get past the very cliche broad terms, let me just delve a little deeper into my cup of coffee. Basically what, st what sparked this uh, epiphany, if you will, is uh, a few months ago, actually a very long time ago, I was involved with someone and it wasn't anything serious. It was very fun and playful. It was so summer loving from Greece and all that fun stuff. I came home for fall break from college. It was the first time home since summer and I think I was trying to hold on to a summer feeling, a person from summer, not a current situation. And I tried to ignite the sparks again to sound really corny, but they weren't there. It's because we weren't the same people as we were in summer and summer was over and it's just, it didn't work. But basically after we reconnected, over fall break, um, I got a text later that night from him. It basically just said in a very blunt way, I don't like you anymore, bye. <laughs> and that was that. I'm not gonna lie, I let myself feel sad that night, you know, for maybe 12 to 24 hours. I let myself cry and just feel like shit and miss him. The next morning I got on a plane, went back to college for what would be the last time, if you haven't seen 
a video explaining my college situation. I'm going to link it here and down below. I worked so hard on that video and I just, it's so important to me and I think you would really benefit from understanding and listening to that. So just a quick side note to that, back to the story. And on that plane, I realized that he had every right to walk out of my life and leave me. I couldn't be mad at him for taking charge of himself. In fact, I'm really proud of him for where he is now. I can say this freely because he had every right to just walk out just as I have the same right when I no longer feel something with someone. And I'm not trying to steer this in just a romantic way. In fact, I didn't want it to be like romantically walk out on somebody when you no longer think they're part of your life because ugh, that's a different situation completely. I want to stick more with friends. I saw a psychic in the spring of 2014. I had just graduated high school. Actually, I might have almost just graduated high school. It was like May or June. And the psychic asked me to think about a person that I used to be close with whom I'm no longer friends with anymore. Something happens. I believe the end of your senior year, people start to kind of go their own way as if they're already saying, deuces, I graduated, see ya fuckers. And some friends become very close. It all depends on the relationships. At that time in my life, I had recently lost a really, really good friend. Um, for the sake of the video, let's just call her, let's just call her Kat. And um, I loved her. God, she was such a great friend. I believed in my head, I didn't tell the psychic this, that the reason she uh, grew distant and no longer was this good friend was because of my mental state. Uh, I was at a very unstable place in my life. I b had a lot of um, personal things that, let's just call them growing pains. I was going through a lot of growing pains. People have told me, slash I believed myself, that they were the reason I were, was losing touch with people because I was a very difficult person to be friends with, which I, to this day, don't know if that's true or if it's just something that I uh, force-fed myself to believe. But I did tell the, the psychic this, and she continued on to tell me that this person I was thinking about, Kat, was in fact jealous of me, and that was why she wasn't a good friend. That she would ultimately hold me back. So I kind of just sat on these words. I didn't know if I believed them. I thought about it, I wrote it down in my journal, and I just kind of let it sit there. It actually helped when I was feeling sad or when I ran into her in places to know that, oh, she's not good for me. She might be a toxic person right now. It kind of hurts to say that out loud because I still, I care about her and I don't want it to sound negative. Like I said earlier, a good person can be toxic to you depending on where the two of you are in life. And so I just kind of kept my distance and I let us do our own things. And the wonderful thing about the universe and when people who were in your life and no longer are, whether they chose to leave or you chose to leave. The wonderful thing is that, yeah, we have the power to do that, but the universe has the power to bring people back into our lives when the time is right or if that person is meant to be in our lives. A good year and a half later, I'm at a party. Cat happens to be there. But what ended up happening this night is Kat and I ended up having a deep conversation together. It was more of a big open apology on both parts, which is super healthy to do. I brought up the psychic and what she said, and the crazy thing is, Kat interrupted me, looked me in the eyes, and said, oh my gosh, that's true. And it was just so great to kind of hear that and understand in a bigger sense what was going on with us. We're at a good place now. I wish I could believe that everybody who leaves that we want to come back will. It's so easy. Life waiting for someone. I spent longer than I should have waiting for someone. Now where I am in life, I I don't know what I would do if this person came back because he no longer fits. We're both growing and sometimes when, when people grow, they grow apart and that's okay. I read this quote a while ago on Tumblr that said something along the lines of the ages between 18 and 24 are full of temporary people. I think this is just a fancy way of saying that the years when you're in college and going to school, you'll meet a lot of people that aren't meant to be in your life for forever, mostly because you're all kind of bunched together in this quad being told, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And thinking, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And then once you figure that out, you uh, spread out and go in that direction. And some people 
go in the same direction and then those happen to be like those really good friends for life and it's hard to accept the fact that the majority of people in our lives are temporary because I love the people in my lives and I don't want to think about them leaving and since graduating high school to where I am today I have met so many amazing people I feel like our time together with certain relationships it's it's over and it's complete and I miss them but I can never go back to like that time and place with them and then some of them they kind of linger on and that hope kind of like well maybe we can go back to how we were after I graduate or when I come home or when they're home. Here's the thing though about temporary people and how people ebb and flow throughout our lives. The universe bringing them back. You can't spend the rest of your life waiting for somebody who might never come back. Life doesn't wait and neither should you. That being said, it's okay to hope. God, I hope that certain people in my life find a way back into it when the time is right, but the difference is I'm not sitting around moping, waiting for them, and not making big decisions thinking, oh, but what if they come back and this works out? I'm putting myself first and I'm doing what I want to do with the hope that maybe our paths will cross again. Because God, that would be a wonderful thing. This is a little harder to do when you're still in high school, and I don't know if I fully understood this when I was still in high school, because you're forced to be in this environment with a group of people for four years or more if you went to middle school or elementary with them. For me, it was 14 years with the same crowd, and I didn't grasp the concept that if I didn't like someone or if somebody made me feel like crap, I didn't have to be with them because we were I saw them every day. But since graduating, if you want to unfollow someone or delete them from your phone, you have every right to do that. I remember spending the first few months at college going through my contact list thinking, I'm never gonna call this person. Delete. Sometimes scrolling through social media, I learned that seeing photos or statuses or just updates on somebody, it no longer made me feel good inside. It either, it made me feel like crap. It made me upset, jealous, mad, anything that isn't a good feeling. I realized, hey, I don't have to see this. So I unfollowed a few people. I took them off my Snapchat. I made the decision not to bring them so into my life. And you know what? Whatever they're doing, it could be great for them, but it's not for me. This isn't an attack on people that I that I didn't put in my life. It's kind of an attack on me and my choices. Now for Facebook, I actually don't recommend unfriending people. Just turn off their notifications so that you're not forced to see their updates. This way, if they notice that you're not friends anymore, it doesn't create conflict. And if you want to see what's up with their lives, it's a lot harder because you have to search their names to go to their actual profile, which sometimes I do when I'm in a good place and can see that, but most of the time I don't even want to. And I'm talking about friendships. Like, don't think this is just about like previous relationships. Actually, that wasn't even on my mind. Besides the whole thing that I talked about in the beginning. So like, fuck you, but not because like, you had every right to just leave. I just don't think you... <sighs> I hope this was in a way that made sense and didn't sound too negative. I just really want it to, like, this is for the better of you and yourself and just investing in yourself. That's actually kind of my mantra this year is that I'm going to finally invest in myself. For the longest time, I always put other people in front of me and I invest so much in others and I put all of my energy into them that I'm left with no energy for myself, nor do I leave any time, effort, money to invest in who I am. And this year, screw everyone else, I'm going to invest in myself, which sounds selfish, but self-care is selfish in a really good way, and it's very important. So the first step in investing in myself this year was giving myself a fresh space that I felt really happy and healthy to be in. So I painted my room. I ordered a new bed, so this mattress is going. I'm actually heading to Ikea with Hadley in less than an hour, so I gotta get in the shower. And I'm really excited and happy where I am right now. Update. <laughs> I really hope you understand this episode and what I'm trying to tell you. Just be careful who you surround yourself with. If somebody in your life is making you feel like crap, unfollow them. You don't have to hang out with them. I don't recommend doing it as harshly as that boy did to me saying, hey, guess what? I don't like you anymore. I don't want to see you. Bye. Because that was a very one-sided street and he kind of left me with no choice. This is really difficult to do well and I'm not really sure I know how to yet because there are a few examples where I wonder if I should have dealt with it differently. But like I said, Snapchat, they don't know if you unadded them. Facebook, 
they have no clue if you took off their notifications. Do your thing. Surround yourself with good people. If someone is being toxic, find a way just to step back and take them out of your life. I guess the only time when this gets tricky is if you have a toxic relationship in your family because family members are permanent. Maybe I should address that issue in a different episode. I really, really want to do Mornings with KK every other Monday like they used to, which turned into, I think, every month. I don't want to be one of those people that apologizes because no one cares and you have no... You don't have to be sorry because I put out a lot of videos since... I just... I love these episodes. I was just... Ah, I'm, I'm apologizing. I'm trying to make it valid. But here's an episode. Here you go. There will be more of these, so stick around. And there will also be a lot of other videos that aren't like this, so stick around. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Let's start a conversation. I really do want to talk about this issue. Like I said, check out the video links in the in the down bar. I left the playlist to all of these episodes if you do like these kind of videos, as well as some other important videos that I would love if you took the time out of your week to watch. Other than that, I'm going to get ready to go to Ikea because I'm going to get a new bedspread and spend time with Hadley before she goes back to school. Please give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy these raw conversations and what I had to say. I really hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you in my next video. And to anybody that I have lost closeness with, whether it was my choice or yours or just the way the world turned and we grew apart, I mean well. Honestly, I still care about everybody that I was once close with because once I allow someone into my life There will always be this place inside for them And I will always only think good things of you if you're watching this and we used to be close and we're not anymore. I probably love you and really care about you and sometimes Do search your name in Facebook just to make sure that you're okay and happy and that's all I really want for you is to be happy for anyone watching this, whether it was a friend in high school or anybody that I met since college to today, um, I mean no harm by saying, cut people out of your life. And I'm sorry if um, I made the choice to no longer be close to somebody. I hope this video explained why. And I hope you're sincerely doing well. And who knows? Maybe we'll talk again soon. I actually just had a dream um, two nights ago that somebody that I used to call a best friend called me out of the blue asking about my life, and it was just so nice to hear that voice. I know this person would never do this in real life, but it was nice to be visited in a dream and to talk about our lives. And this person was really happy, at least in the dream, and so it's just kind of like that message almost. But that's it. I just understand this is kind of a sensitive topic with relationships and I don't want anyone to feel like I am ta I'm attacking them or feel like, oh my god, she unfollowed me on Instagram, this is why. No, I mean, yes, but it's not because you did anything wrong. You're doing you and I'm doing me and this is just what happens and maybe we'll see, yeah, okay, now I'm just getting redundant. Okay, bye!